Hey guys, welcome to a new video and in this one I wanted to talk about rats. As you may or may not know, I am a rat mom. I have been a rat owner since 2012, I believe, and I currently own four boys who occupy a cage that is pretty much half my living room at the moment. <laughs> they sometimes feature in my videos, like my more vlog style videos, and you can also see them on my Instagram and on my blog pretty regularly. So I wanted to make a video today where I kind of show you what life is like with pet rats. I already have a video on my channels from two years ago where I talk about kind of all the basics of, you know, rat keeping, having rats as pets and all the things you need to know before you decide to get a pet rat. So I would definitely recommend you watch that video if you haven't done so already and you're interested in, you know, keeping rats as a pet. This video is going to be much more focused around my personal experience and my boys, like the ones that I have right now. Rats are small but they definitely require a lot of time, attention and care. So we have quite an extensive routine, I guess you could say. In the morning when I wake up, the boys are always waiting for me by the door. They can kind of hear the sounds of when I'm getting out of bed and they know to get ready. I like to tell myself that they're greeting me, but I'm pretty sure it's just because they're waiting for their food. Because that's usually the first thing we do in the morning. I give them their morning feeding. Now I know that opinions vary greatly on feeding rats and what kind of the best thing to do is. Some people say that rats should have access to food 24-7, other people say that it is really healthy for, for rats to be on a kind of intermittent fasting diet where they are just fed once a day and they fast for the rest of the day. My experience has been that when I offered my rats unlimited food they get fat and I mean very very fat like because they will just not stop eating. So I like to choose kind of a middle ground and I feed them twice a day. I do measure my food, I weigh it, and I also weigh the rats so that when I notice that they are gaining or losing weight, I can adjust the amount of food they receive accordingly. Now, at the moment, my rats are also fed separately. This isn't the standard, this is just something that kind of happened as I noticed that one of my boys, Dermot, he is very much into his food and when the food comes out he wants to eat all of it and he has trouble sharing food with others. He doesn't get aggressive or anything but he will just try to eat everything before the others can get to it which means he eats so fast that he tends to sometimes choke on his food which is of course very unpleasant so I took him to the vet to make sure there wasn't anything else going on but we couldn't find you know any other symptoms. He is fine otherwise so the vet recommended that I just feed him separately from the rest and just feed him nice and slow so he gets scatter fed on the sofa. I put down a blanket for him on the sofa and I will just scatter around a little bit of food that he then you know has to find and eat slowly and I will just portion it out for him like that. Then the cage is separated into two levels because Padraig he eats so slowly that the other boys will have finished his food before he has had enough which is of course dangerous for him so I feed him separately so he has his own portion. He can take his time to eat that and finish that without being bothered by the other boys. The other two boys who I call my twins Bran and Kevin they eat together and that is how we feed. So the way I separate the cages I just put a bowl in the little hole door, I guess, and they can't get through. That's just kind of how we do feedings in our house. It's a bit of an extensive routine, but you know, whatever I need to do to keep them happy and healthy, so I'm happy to do it for them. As for the food itself, I am currently mixing my own food because I started to get suspicious that they might have been getting fat off of the type of food that I was feeding them. So I currently make a mix where half of the mix is you know, designated red food, and the other half is cereals and things like that. So I use a mixture of these triangle-shaped, complete kind of lab blocks, I guess they are called, and a red muesli, which is just, you know, again, a red proof mix. And then the other half, I use puff rice, puffed spelt, dry macaroni, unsweetened muesli. So just the plain cheap muesli that just has oats and raisins. I mix all of those together and that's the rat food that I currently use. So when everyone has finished their food I will put down more blankets on the sofa so that it is all covered and they will come out for playtime. Now playtime over here is again very rat specific. Rats are intelligent creatures, they are very intelligent and they all have a completely different personality. I haven't had 
two rats in all of the years that I've owned rats who have had the same personality. They all have their own little quirks and preferences and things like that. So Dermot and Patrick prefer to hang out on the sofa and explore the areas around. So we have a little ledge behind the sofa and then the windowsill that they like to, you know, run around on and just explore. And then Bran and Kevin, they really like going down on the floor. Now, I have never had rats that express the desire to go down on the floor as much as especially Bran has. I needed to kind of figure out a way to make everything safe for him. We have a very small apartment and we don't really have any spare room to rat proof for them. So I did what I could around the living room to make sure there aren't any dangerous things on the floor. Now, luckily, neither Bran nor Kevin are chewers, so they don't touch any cables or anything like that, which could be potentially dangerous for them, but luckily they're not interested in that at all. So all I need to do is make sure I stuff any dangerous, you know, holes they could get into. So for example, I really don't want them to get behind the built-in cabinets in the kitchen. And then I have made them uh, bells to wear so that I can hear where they are. That is just for my own peace of mind. I just want to know that they are still, you know, moving. <laughs> because rats don't make any sound. And also I'm really worried that we'll accidentally step on one of them. So that's why they're wearing the bell. It is attached to a very, very weak hair elastic. So they just wear those and they jingle around the room and they're all happy. So their favorite thing is to get into our recycling bins. We have two recycling bins in the kitchen that keep the plastic and the paper waste. And they just get in there and try to find any, you know, little pieces of food that are still stuck to the plastic wrapping. And then Dermot and Patrick just really enjoy playing with the blankets. So we put down blankets for them and they like to crawl underneath them, rummage around in those and make tunnels and things like that. Or just chill they are a little bit older than the other boys and they are you know they have calmed down a little bit so after playtime i have this little thing that i do with them to make sure that they you know get a little bit of movement even if they're lazy at that moment i will call them they will come to me um, and sometimes I'll make them run around the sofa a few times if I notice that they haven't really moved around much. This is, of course, assuming that everyone's still healthy. <laughs> I will take them back into the cage and they get a treat. And treats around here consist of some fresh fruit or vegetables or some other kind of, you know, human food. Usually fruits and vegetables. Sometimes I'll get a little piece of egg, not too often. They absolutely adore cooked spaghetti. <laughs> so, you know, something like that. Yeah, they will eat that. And that is playtime over for the morning. So before I put them back in the cage I will go around the cage and pick up any stray poops. They generally have two places where they kind of you know do their business. One is on the top of the cage and one is on the bottom of the cage so I will just go around those and pick up the poops and throw those out. I will also replace the tissue paper inside the Sputniks. Those are their favorite sleeping places and I find those are pretty hard to line and they I don't know why but they they pee in those <laughs> like there is no tomorrow. I have fleas for them everywhere, but in those I just stuff tissue paper and I just replace that twice daily. As for the cage, I clean that around once in like five days, I think. To do that, I will, you know, take out the rats first of all, then I will take out all of the old fleas, shake out any dirt that's on it, try to kind of, you know, aim it into the bin, but I always need to vacuum afterwards. Then I will spray down the entire cage with a mixture of water and vinegar. I will let that sit for a few minutes. This is absolutely amazing at dissolving um, urine stains. So I will leave that, then I will wipe it away with some warm water. And after it is dry, I will put some fresh fleas back in. I have a few complete sets, whole cage sets of fleas. I just cut up these liners from some um, really inexpensive Ikea blankets. And I have a few sets Ready so that I don't have to do the laundry every time I take out their things. So I'll replace it with a new set. When I've used up all the sets of fleas, I will put them in a bucket with some enzyme cleaners just to get rid of the stains and the smell. I also put all the hammocks and the sleeping beds and things like that in there. I mean, anything that's soft and can go in the washing machine. So when that has been sitting for a few hours, I will take it out, pop it in a washing machine, and I will wash it on a hot cycle. And that's pretty much what I do for the bedding. I try to change the interior of the cage pretty regularly. They really enjoy a bit of a challenge and to explore a new cage interior, new toys. I do give them, you know, fresh boxes and toys and things like that regularly. So our evening routine isn't very different from our morning routine. I start by feeding them again. Then we go out for some playtime on the sofa and on the floor. And then when they're ready to go home, I call them, they will all come to me and I take them home and they get a treat. So I will also give them some fresh water and again, change the tissue paper in the Sputniks. And that is pretty much our routine for the day. I could talk about my 
my rats for hours, but I wanted to know what you guys want to know about, you know, my life with rats. So I made one of those stickers on Instagram stories where you could send in rat related questions and I'm going to answer a few of those. I think this is a very good one to start with because it answers a lot of other questions as well. And that is, how did you come to have pet rats in the first place? So, um, <laughs> it's a long story. It's a bit of an ugly story. I don't really want to air it all out on the internet, but basically what it comes down to is my roommate at the time, she got pet rats and she neglected them. So when we parted ways, I decided to take them and that is how I got to own rats. I absolutely fell in love with them. I got educated on everything they need, everything I need to do for them. Took them to the vet, bought a new cage, just everything. Eventually one of them passed away and I knew that the other one couldn't stay alone. So I got him two new little friends and that's how the never ending rat cycle began. Because rats cannot be alone, they need to be in a group. So from then on, whenever one of my rats would pass away, I would get two new little baby friends for the old one. Now we're here. <laughs> So that also kind of answers the questions of, um, you know, why did I choose rats and not another animal? And why did I choose boys over girls? I didn't really, it just kind of happened this way, but I am very happy with it. I think rats are absolutely amazing pets. I am incredibly happy to have them. They're one of the best things that have ever happened to me. And I am very happy that they are boys as well. Boys are a little bit more chilled than girls. Girls are a bit more active and playful, but I prefer, you know, to cuddle. What is the smell situation like? How often do you clean their cages to combat it? So uh, I already mentioned I clean the cage. I spot clean daily and then I do a big clean out a little bit more than once a week. There are two types of smell that you can experience when you own animals. The first is the body odor that every animal has humans do as well and the second one is the smell of you know urine and feces and caked food and things like that the first smell is gonna be there you know every animal emits an odor rats do as well as cats and dogs and any other pets there's nothing you can do about that i personally don't mind that smell at all in fact i really like that smell it is a happy scent to me but i will say i go full maternal instinct on them so that might be why it's not necessarily an unpleasant smell in my opinion the second type of smell is definitely preventable as long as you keep the cage nice and clean be sure to remove any leftover food um, be sure to you know remove the poops regularly but and also don't over clean it you don't want to replace the fleas every single day because especially boys they will mark their territory and it will just get more smelly if you clean it too often do they ever try to bite you no um they are very used to my scent so they know that it's me even when i you know stick my fingers through the bars and things like that they are very excited to get treats though so sometimes when a new person they don't know yet sticks their fingers through they will try and see if, if it's any food they never bite they will just kind of like nibble just to check if it's edible i have never been maliciously bitten by any of my rats what are the names of your rats i have Dermot, Padrick, Bran and Kevin. I give my rats Celtic names. All of my generations have had Celtic names. It's a little something that I took with me from university. I studied Celtic studies uh, in university. So yeah, that is why they have unusual names, I guess. How do you think rats would adapt if you got other pets and are rats social animals? Second question first. Yes, they are very social animals. And I know that many rats make uh, friends with other species. I am not entirely sure I'd be very comfortable introducing them to a cat, but I do know it happens. One of the ratcheries that I used to get my boys from, they had a cat at home. So all of those rats were just used to having cats around. These boys come from a home that has a dog. So, you know, they are used to dogs. In general, I think they do pretty well as long as they are used to the other animal and introduced kind of slowly to them. How many have you had and where did you get them? I have gotten all of my rats except for the first pair from ratteries, uh, rat breeders, and I always make sure that they are experienced and that they breed for health and not coat and looks and things like that. Fridia, Caesar, Maxon, Fergus, Campignon, Kivellen, Dermot, Padrick, and Bran and Kevin. So 10 by now. How often do you take them to the veterinary when they are not sick? Um, when they're not sick, I don't take them to the vet. I don't really have any vets near me that are specialized in rats. So, you know, when they're sick, of course, I go there and they try their best to help me. I don't really go for periodic checkups or anything like that. I can tell straight away when something's wrong with them. I notice immediately and I always take them to the vet straight away. I have one right around the corner here, which is great. As long as they're fine, then I don't go with them. Do they know any tricks? I don't really teach my rats tricks. I don't know, I just, it's not something that appeals to me very much, except for the one trick where they 
come when they're cold after playtime. I'll kind of slap my thighs and make a sound that I don't want to make. <laughs> I'm gonna wake them up um, and they will just run up to me. And usually even the boys that are on the floor will just come, come running and, you know, gather their treats. So that's pretty much the only trick, I guess. Do you think you will have non-caged pets at some point or are you a red mom for life? Do you think I will have other pets at some point? Um, I am very, very happy with being a red mom, but I know that Robert really wants to have cats. So when we move into a bigger house, probably a home with a garden, then I think we will get cats at some point. I personally would really love to get a dog one day, but Robert's really not a dog person. So I might wait a couple of years um, before that happens, if it ever does, but yes, for now I'm very very happy just having reds. Okay, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. I'm pretty sure it's getting really long. Sorry about that. So I really hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit more about my pet rats and what it's like to live with them. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there will be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There's another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!